I want to call to order the uh, first meeting of the House Standing Committee uh, on Local Government. Uh, having a quorum. And uh, would the Secretary please call the roll? Representative Bentley? Representative Bowling? Representative Bray? Present. Representative Brown? Representative Chester Burton? Here. Representative Dixon? Here. Representative Doan? Present. Representative Frazier Gordon? Here. Representative Freeland? Here. Representative Imes? Here. Representative Justice? Representative Lockett? Here. Representative Meredith? Yes, ma'am. Representative Proctor? Here. Representative Raymer? Here. Representative Reed? Here. Representative Stalker? Present. Representative Stevenson? Representative Thomas? Present. Chairman Bridges? Present. We have a quorum to do business. Uh, as we get started, I want to first take the opportunity to welcome everyone to our first meeting of this session. Uh, we're excited. We've got a lot of new members, uh, myself included. And I'd like to start out by uh, introducing my vice chair, Josh Bray. He has uh, been on this committee before. He's the gentleman from Rock Castle. He has close, I think, to 15 years in city government. And uh, I appreciate it having him on board on our leadership staff. And uh, welcome, Josh. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce our new members to local government. Uh, I have uh, three different categories. One, we've got uh, some seasoned legislators. However, this is their first uh, session on this. This That would be Representative Bolin, the gentleman from Bell, Representative Freeland, the gentleman from Marshall, and Representative Stevenson, the lady from Jefferson. And then we have an outstanding class of freshmen on our uh, committee today. Uh, and I will introduce them. And once I introduce everyone, if anyone would like to say anything, I'll open the floor uh, to maybe give a little history on yourself. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But uh, I'll start off with uh, Representative Chester Burton, the lady from Jefferson, uh, Representative Doan, the gentleman from Boone, uh, Representative Justice, the gentleman from Pike, uh, Representative Proctor, the lady from Boone, uh, Representative Raymond, the lady from Butler, and Representative Stalker, the lady from Jefferson. And I've not had the opportunity to sit and meet with each and every one of you, but if there's any of you that would like to give a brief introduction, the floor is open. Yes, ma'am. Chairman, thank you. I'm Representative Chester Burden, Beverly Chester Burden from Jefferson. Um, uh, just a little bit of my background. I won't get too involved because we might be here for a minute. But I have uh, information to share with you as it relates to my background. So I served 10 years on Shively City Council, and then I was mayor for uh, one term before I got elected to serve as your representative. Uh, I'm also a Jefferson County Teachers Association member, but a retired teacher as of January 1st. Uh, I've served uh, more than 19 years in public education and more than 18 years in post-secondary. Thank you. Representative Bowling. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to register my presence. Thank you. Everybody's sort of quiet this morning, so we'll move on. And last but not least, we have our returning or what I call our seasoned members that have for a number of years. Uh, we have Representative Bentley, the gentleman from Greenup. We have Representative Brown, the gentleman from Fayette. We have Representative Dixon, the gentleman from Davies. We have Representative Frazier Gordon, the lady from Madison. We have Representative Imes, the lady from Graves. We have Representative Lockett, the gentleman from Jasmine. And uh, the former chair of local government committee, Representative Meredith, uh, the gentleman from Edmondson County uh, was agreeable to stay on the committee, and I appreciate that. I'll lean on him greatly, and uh, he's done a great job these last four years, and uh, I, I'd be amiss if I did not recognize his service to this committee and the value he's added to that. Um, we also have uh, Representative Breed, Reed, the gentleman from LaRue, and we have Representative Thomas, the gentleman from Christian. I don't believe I've missed anyone. Um, we do have a few housekeeping measures to attend to, and uh, just to sort of give you a, a, a general idea of how we're going to run the committee. First off, I want to talk about amendments. Uh, please know that we will have a 24-hour rule for amendments and substitutes. We recognize the circumstances may arise 
in the session that may require an abridgment to this, but we want you to know that will be the extraordinary circumstances, not the norm. Um, any amendment or substitute presented for committee consideration that has not been forwarded to the committee members by staff the day before the meeting may be ruled out of order, and this may in turn affect the timeline or passage of that bill. Uh, teleconferencing, uh, we prefer testimony on any bill before the committee to be in present, uh, be present in person. Uh, guest remote testimony for bills using media such as Zoom may be approved, but only in an exceptional circumstance. So please understand that. Uh, late voting record. Pursuant to standard rules and procedures, we can only record votes for legislators who were absent during the initial vote prior to adjournment of the committee meeting wherein the vote occurred. Please make any request to the chair, myself, or to the staff that to record votes prior to adjournment. Should such a voting uh, recording change the outcome of a bill, additional committee action may be necessary if requested to, re to record a vote that is entertained. So just take that in consideration. Uh, let us know. I, I do uh, want to let everyone know that there uh, we have some committee members that are not present today, they are present. They're in other committees. We have overlapping committee schedule, and it's going to make it very difficult. So we will work with everyone any way we can that's, that's reasonable, but we will have to follow some guidelines. The other things to, uh, I want to get this on record, to anyone presenting a bill to this committee, uh, we want to get everything done before we put before the committee. Uh, we can do committee substitutes but we would like to get everything done before it goes to the House floor. So uh, if, if, if you feel like your bill's getting delayed, but you don't have everything worked out, then that's the reason it's getting delayed. So it'll be up on you, the, the, the one carrying the bill, to get to all the members and, and carry that responsibility out. Other than that, I think we've covered all the business. And... Uh, uh, now, for bills for consideration, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Representative Meredith to come to the table. And uh, while he does that, I want to in introduce uh, our, our staff that's going to be working with us this, uh, this session. We have uh, Mark Mitchell to my left. He's uh, the committee assistant. We have Joe... And I'm going to butcher these names, so please forgive me. I will learn it over the session. So, But uh, Joe Pincheski lee we have Chris Jakovic, and we have Cheryl Walters. And then on the House majority, we have Scott Kimmick to my far right that will be assisting us also. So with that, uh, uh, ex-chairman Meredith, we'll turn the floor over to you if you'll introduce yourself and your guest. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. It is a pleasure to be here with you today, uh, helping uh, Representative Heverin in presenting this bill. Uh, I, ha I am Representative Michael Meredith, representing the 19th House District. I have with me today Jason Woosley, the Grayson County Jailer, and I, I wanted to make sure I said that right, Josh. It's Big Josh to all of us, but Josh Lindblom, the uh, the uh, jailer for Hardin County as well here today uh, with me, and I brought Josh to be my bodyguard, if you couldn't tell. Uh, this bill is a pretty simple piece of legislation. It just allows jails to hire people who ha are 18 years of age in non-inmate contact positions. Uh, they had currently been prohibited. You had to be 21 to work in a jail, period. But this just allows, because of the workforce issues that we see across the Commonwealth and the shortages that we have in qualified workers, to be able to work in non-inmate contact positions uh, at the age of 18. Get that? Okay. We have a motion on the bill. Uh, are there, do we open that up to questions? Uh, does anyone have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Representative Stalker. Uh, thank you, Chairman. A uh, couple of questions. Um, I would like to know what positions um, do not require contact. Can you give some examples of how many we're talking about and what those include? And I will let my jailers explain that part to you. Thank you. I'll, I'll start. Um, we have course administrative positions, which 
we we currently can do that now as long as we're not uh, swearing them in as deputy jailers. Um, although we don't see that a lot, but unfortunately, the with the jail standard way it's written, they under 21 can't work in the secure part of the facility, which is what we're looking to try to change. And in, for some jails, that administrative uh, area is also in the secure part of the facility, so that wouldn't work um, unless we got that change um, through. So medical areas, uh, office areas, commissary departments, um, non-restricted uh, office areas, they would be more like support staff. Um, we currently couldn't swear them in as deputy jailers, so they, they would be more of a support uh, type staff doing clerical type work. Um, so for me, I have three different fa uh, facilities. All three of those facilities have office space and that we could use them for uh, those type positions, whether it's um, answering phones, making copies, scanning documents into our um, jail software systems, um, monitoring camera systems, you know, different type things like that. I wanna make sure I heard you correctly. So when you talk about not direct contact, did you use the commissary or some of the other things that you mentioned earlier? Is that considered not direct contact or direct? Not direct. Not direct contact. So for my facility, and all of us will be just a little bit different, but for my facility, our commissary department has its own office area. So we have two offices that are located in that department, but they are in the secure part of the facility. So in order for us to have someone at that in between ages 18 and 21 then we would have to make that change in the jail standard to to allow us to do that but they would still have no contact with inmates okay. uh chairman one more question please okay uh the other question is do you have any sort of data that you guys can supply as far as um, number or percentages of applicants that have not been able to apply simply because they do not currently meet I don't have an exact number, but I can tell you in, in my experience that we're, uh, I have reached out and they have reached out to me, uh, our local high school has a co-op program and they're looking for places to plug the students in um, and they're excited about it and they want to work for us, but we can't hire them when they graduate uh, currently. And the same thing goes for, um, we're like everybody else, um, we're always looking for employees especially right now just like everybody is but one specific employee we're looking for is a nurse and i could use two nurses right now and i can't compete with the traveling nurse pay so i reached out to elizabethtown community college the nursing program to see if they could assist us with anything so they have agreed to make us part of their rotations for their students but i still can't hire them mr chairman one more question please one more. Thank you. Um, can you give us an example of the pay range for some of the positions that you're wanting to extend the age range for? Currently, my starting pay is sixteen fifty. So if they had experience um, of some sort that we could add to that, we would, but that's our current starting pay. Chairman. Representative Chester Burton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So my question is this. Um, first of all, I just want to um, mention that as we think about those being 18 versus 21, uh, I also want to think about as young as they will be, what type of training or do you foresee any type of training that you will also offer them in the case of, let's just say, I mean, because it has happened from time to time. And I know that Staffing is an issue nationally, okay? I have a relative that works for Homeland Security in the Dallas office, and she is administrative as well. However, they also undergo training so that if there's an outbreak of some sort, um, that they are somewhat prepared as to what the expectations might be if that were to occur. Do you foresee anything like that that you may put in place? Or cross training yes I, I'll answer that for our facility and I think everybody would fall in line the same way so I would want to train them as they were deputy jailers they would still not have the contact but once they turn 21 they'd be ready to go to work as a deputy jailer 
So they would begin training the, the first day they started. And we have a, our facility has, and most of the jails do across the state now, have uh, large training uh, operations. And the State Department of Corrections assists us in that also. So the availability to get training is, is pretty well, I mean, you just, it's out there. So you can go get it or you can do your own. Uh, you can send your staff off and get them certified to do um, your own staff training, which is what we do. Uh, Josh does that as well. And um, I, that that's my goal is okay. to get them fully trained so that once they do turn age 21 and they qualify to be a deputy jailer, then they can hit the ground running. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Seeing no other questions, we're ready for the vote. All those in favor, vote A. Or yes, all those against, no. Secretary, please call the roll. Representative Bowling? Representative Bray? Yes. Representative Brown? Yes. Representative Chester Burton? Yes. Representative Dixon? Yes. Representative Doan? Yes. Representative Fraser Gordon? Yes. Representative Freeland? Yes. Representative Imes? Yes. Representative Justice? Yes. Representative Lockett? Yes. Representative Meredith? Representative Proctor? Yes. Representative Raymer? Yes. Representative Reed? Yes. Representative Stalker? Yes. Representative Thomas? Yes. Chairman Bridges? Yes. The motion carries with favorable expression that the bill should pass. I want to thank uh, Representative Meredith for his uh, testimony and presentation. And I would also, I failed to do one thing. I'm new. Please show me grace. But uh, does any of our members have guests in the audience they'd like to? Uh, Representative Reed. Mr. Chairman, I know we have a lot of guests in and out of the building all day, but uh, I think Leadership LaRue, some of the members of Leadership LaRue might be in the room. So if they are, please uh, make them feel welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Appreciate that, and I know Representative Heverin appreciates it as well. Okay, thank you. Looks like we've conducted all our business. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Okay, and do I have a second? Okay.